Welcome to this video on part two of creating interactive crossword puzzles inside of Microsoft Excel. That's right, this is part two. If you haven't watched part one, I recommend look for the link that I'll put on the screen here and you can watch that one. Not that you have to, you don't have to watch that one to get into this one, but you can kind of see the progression that we're gonna go through from part one interactive crossword puzzles to the new updated version right here. Now, open in front of you, I've got an example file which is available to you to download. If you'd like, so you can follow along with me, you can practice it, you can crack it open and see how this thing was built, whatever, that's up to you. You can visit the description of this video right down below. Look for the Office New Blog link and you can download this example file from that link right there. And while you're down there in the description, if you're enjoying this video, if you learned something new, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, a like, let me know you enjoy it and you've learned something new. And if you're new here to the channel or you just haven't done it yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel so you get updates about new videos that I release to this channel right here. Now, let's jump into the file. Now, open in front of you the example file it is called COM Excel Crossword Puzzle-03. And notice it is a .xlsm file. It's a macro-enabled file. Now, for the most part, I tried to keep all functionality, everything that this crossword puzzle does, inside of the normal Excel environment. And that's done through functions and a little bit of conditional formatting. But I did add an interactive element here that did require a little bit of VBA, hence the macro enabled workbook. So just so you know, if you download the file, you open it up, you will get prompted to enable the macros. And that's all it is. And the macros are coming because of this little button right here, jumble. We'll talk more about that later. We're not gonna get heavy into the BBA. Like I said, I wanted to keep most of the functionality just inside of the normal Excel experience, but we will open it up so you can take a look at it. And if you've worked with VBA or macros before, you can jump in there and kind of dive in and tweak it and do what you need to do it. So, all right, let's take a look at what I've done here. Inside of this workbook, we've got two worksheets, a puzzle and an answers worksheet. Let's focus on puzzle for just a moment. Here, this is where the users are gonna spend most of their time solving the puzzle. So here on the left, we've got the crossword. You can see that it's got eight total answers. Here on the right-hand side, we've got an area where the users can type in their answers, one for each results. Now this is different from part one, because in part one, I expected the users to fill out the answers directly into the crossword puzzle. The feedback that I got was that's cool, but it makes it kind of hard because you got to move from cell to cell to cell and insert each letter individually into separate cells. Valid point. So here instead, I've given the users an area where they can type in the answers. For example, if I go to number one, we got a simple little clue here on the right that says to surpass others or be superior in some respect or area. Any guesses? I don't know if I would get that just thinking about it, but I created the puzzle. I know what it is. So number one, I'm gonna say Excel. If I hit my enter key, whoop, done, and it fills it in for me. So cool. But we'll see how that's done. The magic of conditional formatting and formulas inside of Excel. There's a hint. All right, so they fill in the answers. If it's correct, it will then fill it in properly here. Let's see if I drop down to number three, an executive. What's that? Hmm. Well, if I come up with an answer and I drop it in here, I'm just gonna drop in uh, Bob. I'm sure Bob's an executive somewhere, right? Uh, actually, it's a uh, number three, it's a four letter. One, two, three, four, it's a five letter. Let's see, Bob B, Bobby. All right, what's, what's, what's wrong with that? So I hit my enter key. Oh, wait, it did not fill it into the crossword. That's incorrect. That's not a proper result. Now, I could build on this a little bit more and maybe change the color of the cell. If Bobby's not correct, 
then maybe, maybe make that turn red or you know do something additional to alert users that eh, that's wrong. And we can also do the same thing with correct answers. Maybe make those turn a different color, alerting users that, oh, such as green, that that's correct. So Bobby's wrong, gone. All right. Now, behind the scenes, this is where the user is going to spend their time filling stuff in. But behind the scenes, we need a way as the developer of this crossword puzzle to figure out if they input a proper result or not. So this is where the answers worksheet comes into play. I'm going to hop down to answers. And here you're going to see a simple little table. It's got a column that's just numbers, just one through eight for eight different answers. When then column B, we've got all the proper answers for each of the questions or crossword puzzle sections. And then column C, it's got a partial formula that lets us know whether or not the answer was correct or not. If it's correct, it returns a one. If it's not correct, it would return a zero. Now this is gonna become important to us because we'll use that one value whether or not they got it right. Remember, if they got it right, they got a one. If they didn't get it right, it got a zero. We'll use that instead of conditional formatting to help out the puzzle. So let's take a look at the formula that's being used here. I'm gonna zoom in. And there we go. So here, it's actually got three functions. We've got an if, we've got an is and a, and we've got a match function. So is an A and match nested within the if. Now, if you haven't used an if before, really simply, it checks a condition and determines if it's true or false. And then based on whether or not it's true and, or true or false, it'll return one of two results. So for example, we could say, think of your alarm clock, right? You set your alarm, you set it for seven o'clock in the morning, your alarm is going, right, or your clock, is going through time, through the night, while you're sleeping away. And as soon as it hits seven, it's like, oh yeah, condition true, it's seven o'clock, and the buzzer goes off. But if it's not seven o'clock, then the buzzer just stays where it should be, right? Just off. That's essentially an if. If this is true, do this. If it's not true, then do something else. So in our case, our condition is utilizing a match. Now, the responsibility of a match function is to take a value such as Excel, the contents of cell B1, which is Excel right here, and check to see if it resides inside of a range. In our case, our range is on the puzzle worksheet 05 to 012. So it's just checking to see if Excel is in that list, is in that range. That's it, that's all the match function does. And it says, if I find it, if Excel is there, I'm gonna return its row number back to you. Just what, what position did you find it in? If it's not there, so if Excel is not inside that range, then the match function goes, ah, I can't find it, and it returns an error. It returns an NA error. Now, in steps, the isNA function. The isNA function just checks an expression and returns true or false. It returns a true if the expression results in an NA error and it returns a false if it doesn't. True, false. True, false. Where'd we hear that? That's part of the if. The if evaluates an expression, a condition, and then returns true or false. It says, oh yeah, that's true or that's false and moves on. So here, the if checks the condition, which is really the match in the is and a. If the is and a is returned, so Excel doesn't live there, the user didn't type that in, then it returns a true because the n a error. And the if function says, oh, that's true. So it would re return a zero. If the match function does not return an n a, so it's false, then we return a one. So three little functions here doing the magic. Just determining if the value exists. If it does, do one thing. If it doesn't, do something else. In this case, if it's not there, return a zero. If it is there, return a one. Now, why are those values important? Ones and zeros. If I just copy that formula down here, 
see that everybody else is set to zero because Excels, Execs, Elms, Sec, they don't, they're not inside our list yet. If I go back to my puzzle and I say number three, remember that was one, two, three, four, five letters and executive. See, I'm gonna bring in execs, drops it in there. And if I go back to answers, it's there. So now returns a one. Well, now we can use those values right there to do the next part of the crossword puzzle. So here, this one I gave a lot of thought to. I decided, you know, well, if the users aren't typing in the results literally inside the crossword puzzle, they're putting them out over here. How am I then gonna put the values over here by not using VBA? I could do that through VBA. I could do that through a macro. I can, I can take these values and say, oh, cool, you got that right. Let's make sure that those values go over here now. Well, remember, I don't wanna use VBA. So what I did here, and I, I felt pretty clever about this one, what I did is, I put the values in there. Take a look at this. If I click into one of these cells here, you'll see that there's actually a value in that cell. In this case, cell J6 contains a letter L, but I don't see it. Because you know what? I changed the font color to match the background. Background's white, I made the font white, so it's in there. But now, now, I need it to show up if they put in the proper answer. How do we do that? How do you change colors inside of Excel conditionally? Remember, we have a condition, ones and zeros. If C1, so if the user types in Excel and it's there, it returns a one. So now we can take that one and we can conditionally check it. Oh, if that's equal to one, then we're gonna change the font color to a different color. So here, let's try this. I'm gonna grab J, what is that? J5 to J8. Remember, there's values in each of these cells. The color of the font is just white, matches the background. But with those cells selected, I'll go to Home, Conditional Formatting. Now, I already created a bunch of rules. I'm gonna go down to Manage Rules. So here, we want the rule for J5 to J8. Let's find that one. There it is, it's the middle one. This is for applies to J5 to J8. And the condition or the formula that's being used here is if the answers worksheet, remember answers here, cell C8 is equal to one. Well, if it is, then I'm gonna go in and edit the rule. Then I change the format. And in this case, I change the font to black. That's it. Let's just, let's, let's change it here. Let's make it red. Or maybe I'll make it, I'll make it green. Boop, boop, boom. All right, let's see, number eight. Well, I didn't give that one a hint, so I gotta cheat here. Number eight, it's else. So <laughs> I drop down here, I type in else, I hit my enter key, there it is. All through a little bit of functions to determine if it's there. If it's there, give me a one. Then we take that and we say, okay, if that's equal to one, then we'll apply some conditional formatting to change the color and have that value magically. It's magic, it's magic. Definitely, it's, right? It's magic. Get that value to show up. You gotta love it. Little bit of functions, a little bit of conditional formatting here. Now there's one last thing, one last thing. This was from some feedback that I got from somebody that watched the part one of creating interactive crossword puzzles in Excel. Well. And it also came from a game, an app that I play on my phone. It's a crossword puzzle game. And there, each word inside the crossword puzzle is made up of specific letters. So here, all of these answers right here have these letters right here, or some subset of those letters. Some contain all six letters, some are five, some are four. Then we got one that's three. So, but we have to use those letters right there. Now, part of the problem is you're sitting there staring at these letters and you're trying to figure out, well, what words can I make up from these sets of letters? Well, if I stare at something for too long, my mind kind of shuts off and it's like, I can't think of anything else. Well, what we do is we jumble those letters up. We change their order and hopefully spark something in your head and your brain goes, oh yeah, I didn't see that before. So here I created a button, jumble, give that a click 
and you can see our letters just changed. Changed the order. Same letters, but they changed the order. And now I can look at that and hopefully my brain will go, oh yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I saw that one. I'll hit jumble again and it just jumbles up the letters. Like I mentioned earlier, I tried to keep most of the functionality just inside the Excel normal experience. Formulas, conditional formatting, a little bit of formatting here. But this jumble button, I had to do this one through VBA. So I'm not going to get too heavy into this, but if I go to my developer tab, or actually, if you don't have the developer tab, we'll go to view macros, view macros. I've got one in there called jumble, and I'll hit edit. This is just going to open up the VBA window. Mine popped open on the other screen. And I've got two little procedures in here. This guy right here is doing the jumble button. But the jumble button, one of the things it's doing is it's calling another procedure called scramble word that's doing this right here. So like I said, we're not going to get too heavy into it. This code right here, uh, I cherry picked quite a bit of it from online just to make it quick and simple for myself. But all it's doing is going through and finding each word and changing the order of them. It's just scrambling them up. So you can peek at it, take a look at what's going on inside there. If you're familiar with VBA, there's some pretty cool techniques that were used here. Uh, if you're newer to VBA, I suggest take a look at my complete Excel course and you can go through the VBA section there and learn how you can do stuff like this and start to automate your experience inside of Excel. So little bit of VBA, but like I said, I tried to do most of it just right here inside of the normal Excel interface. So hopefully you learned something new. If you have, make sure again, you give the video a thumbs up. And let me know you've enjoyed this. And if you haven't, subscribe to the channel so you get updates about new videos that I post right here. Make sure you download the file, enjoy it, get in there, learn about the different functions that are being used there, and just have fun inside of Excel. Crossword puzzle. I'll see you in the next video.